Okay, now we want to talk about the other ventral cavity, which is your abdominopelvic cavity. So the name tells you what it is, abdomen and pelvic region. So you can see all the organs have been removed from the abdominopelvic cavity, not all of them, but most of them. Um, but your pelvic cavity is just going to be this little pocket that sits right down here, way low in the base of your abdominopelvic cavity. There's not actually a membrane that separates out the abdominopel or excuse me, the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. So it's sometimes referred to as the abdominopelvic or the peritoneal cavity. Um, all of that is that. Now, the one thing I want to show you that we had some vessels in the heart that um, up at the top here, let me pull these lungs off. You had some large vessels. You had this aorta. Notice this big aorta. It curves around and then it comes down behind the heart and you can actually see it coming down here. So down in this region, that would be the abdominal aorta. And then you've got another vessel that's got to bring all the blood back up to the heart. That's going to be the inferior vena cava, which is going to continue up and come in down here at the back side of the heart and bring in all the blood back towards the heart. So those are the two main vessels. You've got the aorta, which runs up in here. In this area, you'd call it, uh, we're not even going to get into that. Uh, but this is your aorta. And then you've got the superior vena cava, which drains all the blood from your head. And then the inferior vena cava, which drains all the blood from below the heart back up to your heart. All right, well, let's start with the organs in the um, abdominal cavity. We're going to switch over here to this model. Um, the first thing that you see, this big thing right here, big brown organ on the right side, is the liver. Okay, the liver is a processing and uh, detoxifying organ. You'll learn a lot more about that, but it produces a lot of different things, but it, it your filters all your blood and kind of cleans it out. Um, it, it makes different things, but we'll get into the details of all that later. later. So you have the liver that sits right up against the uh, diaphragm on the right side, and it's this big organ on the, uh, the inferior and posterior surface of the liver. So if I pull it out and I go inferior, which is below, and posterior, which is on the back side, you're going to see this organ right here that's usually going to be colored green in most of your models. Um, that's the, the gallbladder. The gallbladder produces bile, which is what is used to help um, process fats in your body. Um, you can live without your gallbladder. People have them removed all the time, but they have to be very careful in their diets about what kind of fatty things they're eating or they'll get diarrhea because you're not processing it as well. So you've got the liver and then on the inferior and posterior side of the liver you have the gallbladder. I'm going to show you this other model here. Here's your... Whoa. <laughs> yes, this Sorry. is filming at its finest. All right, this is another liver from this model right here. Again, on the inferior and posterior side, you've got the gallbladder. So you put it back in like that. So if you're looking down, you can see it peeking out there. But then if you turn it around to the back, you see this big gallbladder right there. So that's your liver and gallbladder. That's on the right side. So that would be in the right upper quadrant of your uh, abdominal cavity. All right, the next thing you have is going to be your stomach. Your stomach is going to sit on the left side, um, and of course it's attached to that tube that we were talking about in the earlier video, the esophagus. So food comes down through the esophagus, goes down behind all of these organs in your thoracic cavity, and it comes out through this little esophagus right there, opens up into the stomach. Your stomach is more of a mashing and kind of a acidic environment that's going to just begin the major processes of digestion, kind of get everything all mish, mishmashed up so that we can send it then from the stomach down to the small intestine. So we go from the stomach, the next tube that it's connected to is the small intestine. Now, if you, it's, it's kind of hard to see on these models, but this small intestine goes down behind this big large intestine and then it makes this mass of curly tubes right here. You've got about 20 feet of small intestine. And the small intestine is divided up into three parts, but you can't tell um, specifically where they stop and start, but you need to know the three different parts. The first part coming right off the stomach is known as the duodenum. So that's going to be where you have a lot of uh, things from different organs, like the pancreas are going to start secreting things into that first section there, the duodenum. And then, and it's a short section, but then you have a, another section in the middle that's known as the jejunum. And again, you can't tell on a gross uh, model 
where it starts and stops. You need to look histologically to figure out exactly where it is. And then the final section of the small intestine, step, intestine is the ileum. And the ileum is going to dump right into the large intestine. There's part of your large intestine. So if you pull this off and you kind of look on the back side, I can get it off. You look on the back side, you can see that ileum is going to open up and that tube right there is going to dump right in here to the large intestine. So you go from the mouth down through the esophagus, then to the stomach, then from the stomach you go to the ileum, which is the first part of the small intestine, then you've got the jejunum in there, and then towards the end you have the, uh, I said duodenum, let me say that again, mouth, <laughs> esophagus, stomach, duodenum, jejunum, and then the last part is the ileum. Okay, and then the ileum is going to dump right in here. You've got uh, an ileocecal valve, so this little pocket kind of hanging down right there, that's known as the cecum. That's the beginning of your large intestine. Um, coming off the, the cecum, you've got this little piece right here. It just kind of looks like a tail hanging down in there. That is your appendix. You can live without your appendix. The appendix has a lot of... Um, immunological cells in it and uh, there's lots of bacteria in it and so it can get inflamed and swollen and that's when you get appendicitis and they just come in here and clip that off and you can uh, live without that. That's what we call a vestigial organ. You don't have to have it. All right, so you've got the ileum from the small intestine comes in here. You've got the cecum, this lower part or just kind of this little pocket that hangs down. You've got the appendix and then going up because this is going now up. You can't go down, so you're going up. So this would be the ascending colon or the ascending large intestine. Um, we, you probably need to refer to it as the ascending colon. All of this is the large intestine, but this would be the ascending colon. Then when you're going across, you name this the transverse colon. Remember your, your cuts. This is a transverse plane. So there's your transverse colon, and then it curves and I'm going to kind of turn it around here just a little bit. You can see how it's curving down. So now it's going down. Well, if you go up the staircase, you're ascending a staircase. If you go down the staircase, you're descending the staircase. So that would be your descending colon. And then I'm going to take it out of here. And you can see that the descending colon is going to come and make this kind of S-shaped portion here. That's called the sigmoid colon. And then finally you have this little tube that's straight, that goes straight down to the uh, opening in the back of your uh, body called the anus. But that little straight tube right there is your rectum. So you've got cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, that S-shaped, rectum, and then the rectum opens up into that uh, opening in the back called the anus. Let's stop there. <laughs>